I think liquid is a waste of time. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! 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 So, those two today I am at UC Berkeley. If you search for fact check, this is one of the biggest feeder college to companies like Google, Facebook. One of the biggest feeder college. Today, we're gonna test those students with one of the most asked questions at Google. Hey guys, chance to win $100. Computer science students, chance to win $100. Computer science students. One lead code question. Yeah. So by the way, what's your name and Nikki. what's your major? Computer science. Awesome. Which year are you in? I'm a first year. So how much lead code have you done Not so far? Not much. Awesome. So it's going to be a pretty easy question. Trust me. If it was easy, then you wouldn't be giving $100. Yeah, it's a lot So the question is actually flood fill. It's actually one of the most common questions. So here's the problem. You're given a matrix which has ones and zeros. One stands for flood and zero is nothing. Now you have to replace one, which is a flood with two. That means the flood is actually filled. Now let's say you start with the middle element. You have to keep replacing left, right, up and down. But the trick part is you have to replace it for the neighbors as well. That's why it is a graph algorithm. Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. You can go ahead. Okay. And the, and the trick is like you got to do it in like five minutes. Yeah. That's the challenge. In, in classic Google style. Yeah. It makes sense, but I don't think I can do it. No. Okay. You can try. Can I give up? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I mean, are you like 100% sure you're not going to do it? Yeah. Bus. Hawa nikal gayi. Okay. Fine. Anyone else wants to try? Yo guys, hundred dollars for lead code. Anyone? You introduce yourself. Oh, Shashank. Uh, oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So electrical and computer, computer engineering. Science. Yeah. Computer science. Computer science. ECS. Awesome. 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 I'm like okay, okay. half half so, right now. So what year? I'm um, freshman. Freshman. Nice. Where are you yeah. from? Austin, Texas. Nice, nice. So think about the problem, and once you have an idea, we can start coding. Yeah. So the timer starts now. Okay. Do I know the? It's a matrix, so. Mm -hmm. So you're given a matrix and a starting position. So given a matrix, is that like an array? Yeah, you can you can structure it however you like. Damn. Wait, yeah. hold on. Like an array of arrays in Java. Okay, but do I have to convert the matrix into the array of arrays? No, you can assume the input as you. Okay, like. okay, yeah. yeah. So assume it. Can I just say it's like that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. You can assume. Uh, oh, so it's the recursion. It's yes, the recursion. <laughs> yes. Nice. So you taught Python in school from from beginning? No, here. So we're doing a question right now in class. I see. I see. So they teach you Python first, right? Yeah, we're learning Python. Okay. I don't think I can solve it. Yeah. Sabas beta. Yeah, my bad. It's okay. It's Thank nice. you for trying. Thank you so much for. Yeah. It. So here's the question. It's about matrix. You can get started, and you have five minutes to know. Five minutes to code it out and just talk through. Code it on like <laughs> yes, yes. Just write pseudocode or whatever. Pseudocode. Oh, yeah, pseudocode. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, so, I can give up. <laughs> no. Sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Okay. No, no. Yeah. Okay. And, and by the way, like, which approach you will choose? Recursion or iteratively? I think recursion is easier. So I'll do recursion. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you'll start at the node. Uh huh. And then, um, so if node equals one then convert it to a two uh-huh then a dispatch you dispatch how would you dispatch it because we're we're just not doing one dispatch we're doing multiple dispatches yes. right so how would you do that for like all four directions right so you do so you'd have to like first of all like min and max it so you'd bound it to like the, right. the dimensions of matrices right. a right. zero zero and then right. like row comma column of the max and then you would add one in the row direction and you'd dispatch another search in the column direction and the negative one and then negative one above. Right. So you'd have four searches. So R plus one, C plus one, R minus one, C minus one. Right. And then those would call these and then would, those would be the new start notes. Right. And you can continue the search and then go back up the stack to solve the problem. Perfect. That is perfect. All right, you, wanna you had to do it iteratively, not through recursion. What will be your approach? Right, okay, iteratively. So, in an iterative approach, if you start here, you could have, you could like basically store a list of which coordinates you want to go to next. Mm -hmm. so Another approach is stack you could have used. Yeah, I could have DFS. Yeah, linked list would not be, a, yeah, perfect. Perfect. yeah, stack but, would be better. But approach is correct. So, and what's, what about the time complexity? Time complexity. So, like, we're assuming worst case where like all of them are ones, mm -hmm. you would, so it would be each search would dispatch four searches, and that would be. 
4 to the power of number of elements in the matrix if it if all of them were one so but okay. still you were very close so congrats Anywho, yeah <laughs> big big shout out for like being our first winner of a hundred dollar giveaway so congratulations Ooh, Berkeley campus <laughs> Not doing Lead Code for two years, you still made it. So this is the talent of Berkeley students. So what do, what, what, what do you think about Lead Code? Do you like it or no? I think Lead Code is a waste of time. What? Oh. I personally think it's better to just like learn the algorithm and like read it and try to figure out in your head instead of like grinding practice problems. It's pattern matching and not like actually knowing the algorithm well. Yeah. So that's that like one thing I would say I think it's useful to get a job though so that's like one positive thing at the end of the day it seems like cramming right yeah that's I, what I did that too but it's not the best way to learn not allowed to walk here the 4.0 so before starting with the problem, first of all, they are IEEE students or IEEE members at least, right? Yeah, That's like one of, the, members. one of the top computer science club. And by the way, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Abhi. Uh, I'm part of IEEE. Are yeah. you now? I am. What year are you? Well, I'm third year. Okay, yeah. okay. You? I'm, I'm Elam. I'm a second year. I'm interested in philosophy and I do CS on the side. Oh, yeah. on the side. So yeah. your major is CS though? Uh, I'm mostly philosophy. CS is like a kind of backup plan because I need a job. Oh, nice. <laughs> awesome. So let's get started. So they're going to do it together. So let's get started with the problem. Do we just BFS from this right. and replace all the ones with two? Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a, uh, we'll use a Q, right? Um, so then we uh, we can say like uh, stack because we're doing DFS equals. Uh, yeah, you can do pseudo code as well. So you have to do like proper coding. It's, like, a, it's the same. Okay. It's cool. Python, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, while stack, uh, we're going to say. Uh, yeah. I'm here for moral support. Yeah, actually. I was going to ask, what are your <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> uh, okay, we're just going to assume we have some function that gives us the adjacent um, ret is some 2D array. So that's output? Return? Yeah, yeah. return. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, n by n. Um, um, okay, here. Um, and then we have to go... Yeah, sorry. What, could you think of it like more recursively um, and also the fact that you can modify the matrix in place so uh, you don't have to use additional memory? Yeah, yeah, I feel like modifying the matrix in place might cause us to, uh, oh, you're right, because the numbers are different now. Yeah. You're creating this, more space this, then. This is not the most optimal. Yeah. No, no, I, I understand. Complexity. Okay. Um, sure, we can modify it in place. So uh, we can just say Matt. He chose the wrong algorithm in the beginning, but with some hints, he was able to get to the right solution, even being a philosophy student. Oh, you, sorry, what, I mean... What, what conditions will you check for? Oh, you just check if you're out of bounds, if your index right. is out of bounds. Right. Yeah. But, yep. I mean, this is just pseudocode. That's correct. Okay. Cool. So now time you want to talk to the, like the algorithm and time complexity? Yeah, O, o of M times N. Um, right, correct. M is the yeah. number of... And it's constant speed. Congratulations. And, and I'll be too. Well, I just <laughs> no, moral support, really. <laughs> Can you believe, guys, that he's a philosophy student and he's still in it? Amazing. Where do you work, by the way? Uh, next next summer, I'm, I'm at Databricks. That, their interviews are harder than Google. That's, you're not a normal student. I, I think that philosophy gives you a lot more like soft skills, which are what uh, Databricks is looking for, more so than like pure technicality. Like, if you're like code forces someone and you never like go outside of your room, like uh, you might have a hard time like explaining yourself to the interviewer and talking about specifically why you want to work at Databricks, but I think that philosophy really gives you those, those uh, soft skills rather than, you know, you remember heavy light decomposition or something. Perfect. Thank you so much for yeah. coming. Have a good day, man. Hi, right, my name's Dylan. I'm a sophomore at Berkeley, CS and Applied Math major. I'm from Vancouver, Canada. Oh, nice. Yeah. Right, and what, what, what do you like to do outside of CS? Uh, I, I play basketball, you know, I, I like to run, you know, They're just yeah. uh, chill. And we got the whole crowd supporting it. Yeah. 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 Alrighty, so it's gonna be like uh, a very popular lead code medium okay. problem on the easier side. Okay. Um, Can we skip to the good part? And then this is connected, so this also changes to a two. This also changes to a two, and this also changes to a two, right? All right. Yeah, so yeah. let's say if this was a one, right? That this will change. also change to a two. Okay. So it's like a full component. Oh, it connects like, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it needs to be like recursive, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's the right thought process. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Right. So how would you go about it? So you get the starting cell, right? Right. You need like a function, like a helper function that like uh, takes in. Mm. Right. Yeah. You need more than one parameter because you need to be able to check if the adjacent Pretty much, if there are cells in all adjacent, if it's on the edge of the matrix, mm -hmm. you don't want to call it, right? Right. Uh, and then you check each 
cell, if it's a one, you call the function again on it. Right. And then you change the cell that you're on to a two. Okay. Yeah. That's the correct initial process that I'm looking for. Yeah! 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 Alright, alright. knowledge to kawal ka hai So, what are the edge cases that you will um, think about? So, let's say for each one, right? You're checking in adjacent cells. Yeah. What what are what are the edge cases that you will think about? Uh, it needs to be in range of the uh, matrix. Right. Right. It can't be out of the uh, matrix. Right. Right. It, it okay. It needs to make sure that. You're checking that it's a one specifically, right? right? So it can't yeah. be a zero or a two. Yep. You don't want to like go back and change it. Yep. Yes. So you need to change the cell that you're on before you call any of the right. Adjacent. Spot on. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you want to go ahead and code it. Code it. Yeah. Okay. Just like write pseudocode any pseudo language language of your choice. I'll look for you. No, no, no. no I, I, okay. Oh, you got it. Okay. I got it. I got it. I'm just shaking a little bit, you know. The okay. Pres it, it, pressure's getting to me. It's all good. Don't worry. <laughs> no pressure. I'm trying to think. It's not zero. Then you can still go one more to the left, right? Right. Yep. You're gonna call it with the same Y. Yep. What will so what will be the complexity if M rows and N columns? Is it big O off? Well, if it's linear, it'd be big O of N, right? Or no, no, it's an M by N matrix. It's oh, M by N. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was thinking of how many. It'd yeah. be like, would it be M N? Or? Exactly. Yes. Spot on. And what is the space complexity? The space. How many addition? How much additional space are we using here? Well, considering the recursive stack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let's yeah. think. Because each recursive call would open like a new like frame yep. essentially, right? Yeah. Uh, to use like 61A uh, yeah. lingo, uh, but it would at most open M N spot Correct. on. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So here's what I've learned: it is not about cramming lead code questions. It is about confidence, conversational skills, and most importantly. Asking for help if needed. Because when you ask a hint mang te ho from the interviewer, you are telling that you really want to get to the right answer, and there is nothing wrong in that. Bahut maza aaya challenge karke, right? Bhai to bhai, dude, like it was so fun. Yes, very very satisfying. Students are really smart here, but we didn't have to give hints for them to solve it.